it's Oscars time again, and one movie that I hope will do very well is Vim Vendor's Perfect Days, um, which is an incredible movie. It's unlikely to win an Oscar, frankly, because there's just so many great movies, including international movies this year. But I suspect that Perfect Days will be watched and contemplated for many years to come. It's a simple story told quietly that creates a space for everyone to find their own meaning. For me, it revealed an unexpected and comforting truth about growing old. Welcome to the Like a Bird podcast. I'm James Chadwick, and throughout 2024, I'll be sharing one essay a week or perhaps an interview, and then I'll be rolling all these ideas up into my second book just in time for Christmas. But why Like a Bird? Well, it all started, as it often seems to do, with a single line that I couldn't get out of my head by the French writer Paul Valéry. One should be light like a bird and not like a feather. That line felt true and important. Yes, we should all want to grow lighter and freer as we grow older, but lighter with control, like a bird in flight and not like a feather buffeted around by the wind. And so this weekly podcast and newsletter are for everyone ready to grow lighter by gently cutting themselves free from the ideas, the habits and the people that are weighing them down. Got any of those? My guess is yes. So let's dive in to this week's idea, which is also available at jechadwick.com. It's Oscars week again, and this year has been an incredible crop of movies. I, I've really enjoyed going to the theatre this year. Um, let's do some predictions. I think for best picture, it looks like it's going to be Oppenheimer. If it was my choice, I would choose Poor Things, because I think that movie just operated on a huge and original new scale. It was very surprising and um, not altogether pleasant to watch, but uh, it was a remarkable movie. Um, if we look at the best lead actor, I think that's going to be Gillian Murphy. And uh, best lead actress, it almost must be Emma Stone. Lily Gladstone in Killers of the Flower Moon was incredible. I think they're kind of neck and neck, but Emma Stone uh, deserves it for poor things, in my opinion. Um, and what else? Uh, best supporting actress has got to be Davine Joy Randolph from The Holdovers for her incredible performance. Um, best director, probably... Nolan for Oppenheimer, I'll go along with that. Um, uh, in Best Original Screenplay, there was this incredible movie called Anatomy of a Fall, um, which uh, uh, is set in France um, and uh, profiles a murder or an accident, who knows. Um, that uh, That's definitely worth watching. And possibly the best movie of the year for me was... Um, was the film that I think will win the best adapted screenplay, which is American fiction, which made me laugh um, out loud uh, 50 times in the in the theatre and I think reminded me very much of Sideways. Um, best international film. Uh, the, film the, the film that I'm going to talk about today, which is Perfect Days, uh, is in this category. I don't think it's going to win because I think Zone of Interest is such a powerful theme and movie set, you know, about the Holocaust and was so exquisitely uh, done and painfully um, represented, I think Zone of Interest will win there. So anyway, enough of the predictions. Today, uh, I would like to share my film review. It's actually the first film review I've ever written. Um, I saw the movie this week, and I was so inspired, it just couldn't get it out of my head that I thought I'll try and get my ideas down on paper uh, and also kind of try to work out why this movie had such an impact on me. Uh, and I think it did throw up some interesting uh, questions and insights about life. Bim Vendor's Perfect Days explores Komaribi and reveals a comforting truth about life. Bim Vendor's latest movie is unlikely to win an Oscar on Sunday, yet I suspect Perfect Days will be watched and contemplated for many years to come. It's a simple story told quietly, creating a space for everyone to find their own meaning. For me, it revealed an unexpected and comforting truth about growing old. The action, or perhaps more accurately, the non-action, takes place over a week or two in the life of Hirayama, a 60-something toilet cleaner in an outer district of Tokyo. He wakes early alone each day on the floor of his narrow Spartan room and rolls up his futon. The camera rarely leaves him as we follow his daily routine, brush teeth, canned coffee, dry van, clean toilets fastidiously, lunch in the park, communal bath, street cafe for dinner, read under a lamp and sleep. 
There's little dialogue and less storyline, and each day he repeats his ground do- groundhog day routine, scrubbing toilet bowls meticulously until they gleam. In less expert hands, this could have been a soul-destroying film to endure. Yet Wenders infuses every crack of Hirayama's routine with humour, beauty and joy to create a truly life-affirming experience. I watched Perfect Days last night in the theatre. Before the film started, Wenders and his lead actor Koji Yakusho, who won Best Actor at Cannes for his performance, gave a short introduction to thank the audience. The men stood quietly side by side, smiling warmly with their eyes. Wenders explained how the movie was inspired by Komaribi, the original title for the movie, which literally means sunlight leaking through trees, but also suggests a much larger philosophy. Komaribi reflects the very uni- unique, almost romantic love of the Japanese for nature, but also the importance of pausing often to notice and appreciate the tiny moments of beauty all around us. It's another example of a Japanese word we need in our language, like ikigai, or life value, and eruso, pretending not to be home when somebody rings your doorbell. Hirayama not only understands Komoribi, but he effortlessly expresses it through his every gesture and impish smile. At lunchtime, he sits in the park and takes photographs with an old camera of the dappled sunlight leaking through the leaves above from the same tree. Every week, he develops the 35mm film and keeps only the best photographs of his tree in a memory box. He saves tiny saplings from the parks and brings them home to nurture lovingly. Even at night, his black and white dreams feature shimmering branches and leaves. There's a delightful vendor's visual moment in the middle of the movie that is easy to miss. The cleaner is busy inside a cubicle polishing a toilet when he hears voices outside. He pauses and looks up to watch the blurry coloured figures of the passers-by reflected on the toilet ceiling. If you look for it, sunlight is always leaking through trees. Kamurebi is not only about nature, though. Hiriyama unconsciously carves out a distinctly analogue path within an overwhelmingly digital city. In addition to his 35mm film prints, he devours paperback books at home and in restaurants, and above all, he cherishes his collection of 1970s cassette tapes, which he inserts every time he drives his van. The cassettes provide a loving and classically vendor's soundtrack. Van Morrison, Otis Redding, Jagger, Simone, and of course, Lou Reed's eponymous Perfect Day. Hiriyama lives a simple and modest life, but he's not alone, and he finds many ways to connect, uh, to enjoy human connection. He's firm but kind to his young and unhinged co-worker, whose girlfriend becomes infatuated with the beauty of the older man's cassettes. He harbours a secret love for the proprietor of his favourite restaurant, and plays tic-tac-toe with a stranger he never meets, hiding a sheet of paper daily in one of the toilets he cleans. When his teenage niece turns up unannounced for a few days, he quietly gives her the calm love she needs. She can't understand why her uncle lives so modestly, disconnected from her wealthy mother, and she impatiently wants to know what her world is. He gently offers wisdom. Next time is next time. Now is now. Which she finds re- reassuring. This line, and all of his gentle kindness, we begin to understand, suggests the true meaning of Komarebi. In a sense, this now is now philosophy was also infused into how the film was made. There was no time for rehearsals, and the whole shoot took only 17 days. Yakusho had no idea that his role would be mostly silent until the script arrived. The lack of dialogue puts much more weight on the intimacy of the actor's expressions and movements. The film has an interesting backstory. During the pandemic, Wenders was upset about the breakdown of the sense of common good in Germany. And hearing this, Koji Yenai, billionaire scion of the Japanese clothing giant Uniqlo, reached out. Yanni had launched the Tokyo Toilets, a public-private renovation initiative in Shibuya, to push the design limits for public toilets. The 17 toilets feature designs by celebrated Japanese architects, including Toyo Ito and Tadao Ando. Yana was angling for a short documentary, but Vendors was so inspired by the designs, including a breathtaking set of three transparent cubicles that turn opaque when the user locks the door, but also by this very Japanese commitment to public responsibility, he wanted to make a feature-length film. Is it a realistic portrait of working-class life? Perhaps not. The toilets Hirayama must clean are far less stomach-churning than the average Japanese toilet, and nothing compared to those a British or American worker might have to endure. Benders admits, 
I did idealize Japan a little bit in this movie and in this character. I'm not sure if a man like this really exists, but I think he should. Just as I needed angels to show Berlin in the Wings of Desire, I needed a caretaker for these toilets. As with my other two favorite vendors movies, Wings of Desire and Paris, Texas, the director provides long stretches of silent beauty for us to reflect on our own daily lives. Because we spend so much time in Hirayama's shoes, the movie becomes a Rorschach test. A Rorschach test. We all take out something slightly different, depending on how we feel about experiencing his life. For me, Perfect Days asks a big and important question. It's related to Komorebi and the importance of noticing the everyday beauty in things, but it also goes further. The question I kept asking myself on the drive home was this. Could I be happy living Hirayama's life? And if so, what are the implications of this for how I live my life today? I should declare that I'm 52 years old and increasingly curious about growing old gracefully. It doesn't scare me. In fact, it excites me. Just as there's an art to being young and also to succeeding in midlife, there must certainly be better ways to glide into old age. Here in Hirayama is a man who appears to be doing it well, or at least happily, and with very modest means or expectations. So, to be even more precise, the critical question the film asks each of us is how will we cope if we end up poor and alone in our old age? This isn't an academic question. It could happen to all of us. Hirayama has very little money, few possessions, no partner or children, and has to wake up early to clean public toilets. By most measures of society, he is failing. And yet he appears to be growing old happily and gracefully. He seems at least as happy as most 60-somethings we know. Why is this such a critical question to ask ourselves early and often? Because if we believe we will be happy enough in old age, even if we end up single, poor and taking pride in a simple job, then this is very useful to know as early as possible. This knowledge might give us great consolation today and reduce our fear of an uncertain future. It should help us to fully enjoy the present, knowing that even a bad future scenario might actually be rather enjoyable. We might watch and re-watch this meditation on Kamarebi for the same reason we return to Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. They remind us that our greatest freedom is the freedom to choose our attitude. As Frankl writes, the attempt to develop a sense of humour and to see things in a humorous light is some kind of a trick learned while mastering the art of living. The art of living has always fascinated me, and in 2020 I attempted to share my own personal take on it in a short novel titled Path, A Story of Love, A Guide to Life. My idea was to craft a boy-meets-girl love story that my own children might pick up and read for fun, but to root the story quite explicitly in a guide to life, which they might turn to should they ever start looking for something. The book was illustrated beautifully by my eldest son, Lawrence, a professional artist. I mention it because, in so many uncanny ways, Hirayama perfectly expresses the guide to life embedded in the book. Take a path and walk it with a good mind and good choices. Path all rests on a foundation of three minds. The grateful mind, savor it all every day and always feel lucky. The compassionate mind, we must care and do more if possible, and it's always possible. And the observing mind, neither chase nor avoid things, but accept them and be there in the middle. Grateful, compassionate, observing. Hirayama has learned the art of balancing all three with grace and humor. Perfect days never suggests that all our days will be perfect. No amount of possessions or financial security can ever guarantee this. There are no perfect days. Hirayama's face beautifully communicates this in the very final scene of the film, as Nina Simone's feeling good plays on his cassette player. Every day will bring joy, sadness, strength, laughter, loneliness and love. All we can do is make the most of today. Next time is next time. Now is now. Thank you for listening to Like a Bird. Please subscribe to get one new idea a week. Check out more creative projects at jechadwick.com and share with anyone you think might be trying to grow lighter. And have a great light week. <laughs>